The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the uh, 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock show, Monday through Friday. We take your calls at 877-927-6648. I'm also the author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter. And we've got a lot to do today. Technical Friday. Let's get to it. And one of the reasons why I've been saying that we want you to stay short for subscribers, the, the Dow and the SMH is the semiconductor index is because I think that there is, even if there was a bounce, even if it was a short-term bounce, I think that the bounces are transitory. We need to establish some kind of a low, and there's a little more information that we need to get before we can do that. So um, now let me see what's going on. Are my charts showing? Yep, my charts are showing. Um, okay. So now let's go to the... Uh, just for the moment, I'm going to hold uh, off going through the indices just to recap. The dollar has had a fabulous move. It's made another one of those arch formations. Remember, just let me go through this quickly because we've got quite a number of people that I know have just started listening uh, to my show. Uh, new, new denners, new tigers, uh, core patterns in the Chapman wave. We try to identify the lowest low bomb yet to count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them on the way up. Capital A, B, C, D. At the fourth highest peak, at D, other things can happen. Yes, it can recycle and go higher to E, F, and G. There's no H. You have to re uh, you have to reconfigure it to find out what's happening at that particular level. You could could get a G slash C, which usually leads to a cup formation going to a D. Talking about formations, there are only three patterns as far as I'm concerned: straight up, straight down. That's that pattern right there, straight up, straight down. So you go peak A, B, C, D, and D, other things can happen. But that's what we look at, try to identify the lowest low bar. And then, so it's one pattern, up and down, straight. There's an arch formation, which could be an inverted V. It's the same thing going from point A, rallying, coming back to that point A. How do you test it is the issue. Then you can have a cup formation, you rally up, how you come back to that particular level, either in a cup or a V-shaped pattern, is important. Just straight up, straight down, arch formation, cup formation. Then you can get a combination. That's the variation. The variation is a lowercase h where you take out the left side. Low. We're going to see tons of those today, and that's very important. That's why it's rare, because if you go under it in a certain manner, you can keep doing that. And then the upside, you go to the left side high, how you take it out is very important. Enough with that. Let's get on with see what we're doing. Look at the cup formations in, in the weekly chart. Look how many we've had. Huge cup formations, small little cup formation, big, big. These are more like bowl formations, and you're going right into resistance area in the 98s in the dollar, and there's the weekly chart. The MACD is still good, flat, but good, and it keeps the last uh, major signal, and that's up. And the stochastics at 76, under 80 percent says, you know what, right here you could get some kind of a consolidation. So far, the weekly chart has had no consolidation at all. It's still a green candle for the day, nicely above the nine-period moving average, well above the 1736 14-period uh, moving average. But this is where you can start to find at a leg E, very quick D to E, this is where you can start to have some kind of uh, consolidation, let's call it. And look at the uh, dollar in the daily. You've made a peak E slash B, and the MACD is okay. It's not great. It hasn't crossed negative, and stochastics under 80%. So this is now a little bit more vulnerable towards some kind of digestive phase. Talk about patterns. The, the Dow, I spoke about this when I was um, doing my, when I was the guest speaker at the Boston Investors Group here at, um, uh, in Boston area at over at MIT in Cambridge uh, the other night. And what we'll be looking at we were looking at the arch formations, and then I said this particular candle has a lot of implications, especially when it's at a low. It should be, it should be a big positive. And if there is a close above this, uh, I can show it here. It's a little bit better. Uh, right here, this is what I show my subscribers every day. It says Chapman Wave Roman candle. Okay, and that Roman candle right there. The rule of thumb for me, especially if it's at a high is that if it starts coming down, watch out below, uh, especially if it takes out halfway into the wick. But 
On the bottom side, when a sign to get to a, an area where there could be support, it has to close twice out of three sessions above the high of the of the Roman Chapman Wave Roman candle. Why is a Roman candle? You know how Roman candle, you, it's got this tiny little wick. You've got the big uh, candle itself, and then you've got a long stick. You like that little wick? Boom. It explodes to the downside. So I'd say within two sessions, if there is a a 90-minute period where the Dow is trading below 25, I think I said 25,005, sorry, 25,050. Um, that would be very negative, and that would say we're going to or even below the wick low of, in this case, it was the wick low of Wednesday. So now we're looking at, uh, that was Thursday, that was Friday. Yep, today's Friday. So we've done that. And we're actually forming another, maybe a Roman candle. However, if you look at the 120-minute chart, we're getting close to some kind of support at the automated Chapman Wave support levels, 24,706.22, and the low today is already 24,840. So with that in mind, let's go now to the nitty-gritties. The nitty-gritties are saying that in the Dow chart, the MACD is still very negative and wide and expanding. The stochastics at 18%, and my contention has been that we probably have to wait for the single digits, not just the 15, but not the teens, but the single digits before we get a significant chance of a, a strong rally, a more sustainable rally, talking about three to five sessions or more, maybe even longer, but I don't know. But that's we haven't got that yet. And the weekly chart has made a peak. See, if that was a D, everything about this would have had a down candle uh, with the two doji candles at the top on the, uh, on the week of the 26th of April and the week before. Um, and we've, we've got 26,695 failure pattern under the 14 period moving average, under the nine period. Nine's crossing negative below the 14 period. Magni's negative stochastics way down 45%. But in percentage terms, the Dow is still holding. Well, it hasn't gone to a 50% retracement yet. Uh, it could be on the way, but it hasn't done it yet. And that monthly chart, you look at those big red candles off the, um, the this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So today we're going to close out with a really ugly red candle, unless it's a spectacular rally between now and 4 o'clock. And it goes above the 14 period moving average in the monthly, which is at 25,054. Ah, but once again, we go to 25,050s. Okay, so as it stands right now, um, very negative. We, we, we remain long for subscribers. We remain long the DOG, the, the, the long side of the short ETF of the Dow. And now we can go to the S&P. So what has to happen by next week, Wednesday, you really need to see a rally over 25,250 to say there's a chance that uh, we've made at least an internal low before you get some kind of a residual low. Um, going on to the S&P, SPX.X, well, we've got a lot of questions coming in. Leg E to the downside, not a bad candle, not a very big uh, distance because it gapped down so much, but we're watching it closely. Weekly chart is negative, and this is the first week that I'm going to be able to put a circle here with the stochastic, with the MACD crossing negative. That's the first time since it crossed positive way back on... The week of the 8th of February, uh, way down in the 2650 area. Wow. All right. So that's that's at least some of the technicals I want to do. A lot of questions about uh, coffee, sugar, wheat, corn, soybeans, the market, the VIX. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. In the middle of trading, in the middle of the show, I just, uh, I covered, I, I thought I would got the exact high of the bounce today. And then I do, because I was doing the show, I had to cover. <laughs> Pity, because it just keeps going down. Um, well, that's the way it is. So the E-mini has to go. It's at 27.62 right now, down 28. It needs to go to 27.73 by 2 o'clock this afternoon. If it does that, that says, hey, you know what? The market's starting to work out what's going on here. But if we are still down very sharply, Dow's down 240 right now. S&P's down 26. If the S&P, I'd say to subscribers to my opening call, that if the S&P is down, whoa, let me get the exact figure. Yesterday, I said 1 o'clock, but it shouldn't be 1.30 is what I said to subscribers. And that was accurate because at 1.30, we were really shaky. It went to a, Dow went to a plus 50, but then it started to fail. Uh, let me see if I can find this, if you don't mind. I'm taking one moment here. Uh, where was it? Where was it? What time did I come on this morning? Six something, right? Uh, yeah, am I going to find it? I think I'd said. I, I don't want to get out of context. So, uh, all right, I'm not going to be able to get that right now. But oh, there it is. Um, if the S today, um, today. Rally attempts could keep failing, especially at 2.35 p.m. if the ES is minus 22s or more. Okay, so we're down minus 27. Now we've got uh, two hours to go before that particular time frame. Okay, let's get to the nitty-gritties here. I just wanted to check. No calls. Okay. I wanted to go through just really quickly because it's important. Look, sugar has finally had a little bit of a move off the low. So this is a continuous contract. At 11.98, it's made a leg, a peak C, so a peak B, and it starts a leg C to the upside, one penny above 12.01, the high of the 29th of May, starts a leg C. This is just the start of a move because the weekly and monthly don't look very good at all. But the question I had was, could I look at coffee? Uh, I'll get to all the other questions as well, but let me just do this. Coffee. The continuous contract is a buy mode. Remember, I had mentioned this the other day. I said it's looking really good. I think we were somewhere around. We had just broken out of the leg B to start leg C. I said the MACD is acting very well. Stochastic's good. And the nine-period exponential moving average of 96.71, 95.23 was the weekly pink. Here we are. Nine-period exponential moving average it needs to go above. And if it can do that, that's really good because the next level of resistance is 96.73. Wow, we have soared all the way to 102.75 yesterday. 
That's leg C. If there's no new high today, that becomes a peak C, but it looks strong enough that there should be a leg D. This is a single leg A up in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart is not even a leg A. I have to wait another month before I can call it a leg A. So that says I'm always worried about the single leg A because that can fail. Just make sure that 96 to 95 is key support over the next week. But I, I think this is a really good commodities. This is going to be a big thing. Over the weekend, I'll be doing it for my subscribers. I'm going to be doing a lot of work in terms of what we're looking at in the commodities. The reason why we have the DBA, which is, where did that go? Did I type it? I typed it into the den. No. DBA, type it in right here on the trade station. The reason why we have DBA, the agricultural DBA Agricultural Fund in the 15s is trading at 1680 right now is because I kept talking about it. Remember, I did Larry's show about a week ago, I think ago. Well, was it Friday a week? I think so, Thursday a week. Yeah. Um, I did the show and I said, I love the way wheat is acting. And look what wheat has done. It has screamed from the 400. email please check your mic my mic's fine there's nothing wrong with it i don't know what's going on uh just let me know when the sound is back this is really frustrating i'm not sure why it's going on um well, just i'm talking let me can know when the sound is back back okay good so uh, this intermittent uh, it's, it's just really frustrating i don't know what's going on about that uh, I'm not sure if it's on my side or where, wherever it is. So wheat is doing fabulous. Down three today, but wow, what a nice move. Look at soybean. Soybean was just in the doldrums. In fact, it was. I was talking about sugar and wheat, uh, soybeans in the same breath, saying they got to break out. Well, it did break out. It went from a low of, in the continuous contract of 791 to three days ago, it went to 892 and three quarters. Today, it's down a little bit, down one and a quarter at 888. And it looks like it wants to tackle leg C. It looks like it wants to go into 918, the 200-period exponential moving average in the daily chart. And corn does corn. Corn is looking even better. Corn has gone from 343, round number low, on the 13th of May, trading at 432. And just the other day, three days ago, it was trading at 438. And it looks like it wants to make a leg C. It looks like it wants to go even higher. These are very big moves. And if the Fed was, oh, futures are down again. I'm on my show. What can I say? Frustrating day. Um, uh, corn is now, uh, look to the future in sugar, SB. Uh, no, SB what? SB, give me a SBV, uh, 119. I'm just giving a guess. Yeah, SBV is a 1234. Uh, that has gone to a leg B. Uh, oh, it's still in a leg B because for three days it's had the same high. 12.33, 12.33, today's high is 12.34. This is continuing leg B. You want to see 12.47 by Tuesday of next week, Wednesday morning at the latest. If it doesn't do that, then it's going to be a laggard. Um, hope that helps. Okay, crude oil. I'm coming to bonds. I'm coming to the, everything here is important. Crude oil is plunging down 164 at 54.94. Down in leg E in the daily, but that month, the weekly looks terrible and the monthly doesn't look very good. I'm worried because I've been talking about this for about a week now. I've been saying if crude oil starts to pull back further, they've been going up. The, the IYT, the transportation index, as well as the Dow, as well as crude oil were going up together. Now they're coming down together. That, that synchronicity just tells me that there's kind of economic weakness that I've got to respect. So crude oil has to hold, well, I said 54 is, is a base. If it closes under 54, that's a real problem. Next thing I want to look at is the resistance is up in the 58 to 59 area. So here we go. For a few days, I've been talking about the, the, the TLT. I've been saying, yes, the TLT is ex extended. Yes, rates have become, have, have, have decrescendo, gone down, precipitously, they haven't had big moves like this in quite a, quite a while. But at the same time, 
and I made a big deal about this when I was doing the talk the other day and when I did my show yesterday. I said, in my work, the tradition, it just didn't quite work that way fully uh, in the last big move down into December's lows. But normally you would see in the volatility of the market, volatility in stock market terms means the market's going down. They never say volatility when it's going up 300 points a day. They say volatility on the way down. So on the way down, when people get nervous, they tend to take money out of stocks, just as we are building up cash positions over the last week or so. And they put it into the so-called safety of bonds. I say so-called because, you know, you, you, you're at risk. You, you're getting a big uh, capital gain, but your dividend, which is really what you're trying to get, is shrinking. But actually, I think they're putting money there for safety because at least when the market comes down, you've got a place that allows you to go somewhere. You remember, Tina, there is, there is no alternative. I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back. So the, the TLT is up a dollar point oh eight at one thirty one twenty eight. So what I was discussing is that if money keeps coming back, now I know there were quite a lot of people that I heard or read about that said yields have made some kind of a bottom and the TLT is making some kind of a top. And my contention is maybe if you're looking at the numbers, then you could say there's a case to be made. But if you're looking at the chart formation, the chart is saying the stochastic is flat. This is what I was saying yesterday. At 93% is flat, not reversing down. Yes, the on-balance volume is a little uh, overbought. But so far, 
money is coming out. I mean, this is the way it looks like. Money comes out of, of stocks and goes into the bonds. And as long as this market is really weak, I think that's going to continue. So this monster move, look at this candle for the day. This is going to be for the week, for the month. This is a monthly candle. This is the biggest candle we've had. Um, yeah, that, to me, visually, I'm just looking at the biggest I can ever recall in the shortest period of time, one month. So that's just saying, yes, there's a lot of nervousness going on. So that takes me to the next issue, which is, what about the VIX index? So the VIX index, oh, um, up at dollar thirty-nine at eighteen point sixty-nine. Uh, I mean, give me a break. Uh, it should be at twenty-two, twenty-one. I mean, if it went to twenty-three point thirty-eight on the 9th of May, when the news wasn't anywhere close to as so-called bad as we've got right now, what's going on here? So I got an email. Maybe this sums it up. Paul says you're as good as a, and he gets even larger letters. A melting snowflake. Just admit it. So <laughs> I'm not sure what that means because um, I have subscribers short, Paul. I mean, anything can happen if you're short. Anything can happen. That's okay. Um, but we also have some long positions. So far, uh, not all, but most of them have actually held pretty well. Uh, so. <laughs> What we're doing is dealing with the, with the market here. So um, I, I, I guess you've got this big, deep whoosh that I'm, go, I'm about to uh, uh, explode or something, whatever. But uh, I don't know. Meltdown, it's, it's fine if you're on the short side. Uh, but my bigger long-term thing is the quietness of the market in terms of uh, daily people talking about the stock market. I've never, ever, and I really mean ever, Heard such quietness about the stock market as long as I've been involved in the market, which is a very long time. So um, that says to me, we could get terribly bad news, et cetera, and the market going sharply, but there's still another big phase to come when it is. I'm not sure yet. I've got a feeling I know when it is, but <laughs> right now it isn't. All right. So let's get on with it. So those are the questions. So the GDX, the question in the den, did I just do this? GDX has exploded above the, the talking about exploding, above the 200 period exponential moving average. Yesterday it closes in the 2060 uh, area. Today it's at 2169, up a point. It's up 91 cents from the close yesterday. Uh, 2168, up 4.41 percent. If you look at the weekly chart, it's done this before. The technicals on the daily are improving in a hysterical way. I'm not happy about the way it, it had, but a price is a price. And all I can say is that the real clue will be about next Wednesday or Thursday, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning. If we're looking at the GDX and the GDX is trading at 22.35, somewhere around there, nicely in the 22s, trying to tackle uh, this downtrend line right here that'll be next week. So next week will be on that bar. 22.16, so 22.35, I feel comfortable saying that, instead of just being in the 21.30 area or under 21.18, um, saying this was just a momentary uh, bout of uh, gold buying out of fear. That's one thing. But if, and now let's just look at a couple of gold stocks. Let's look at GG. Is GG still around? No, GG is now gold, is it? I think that maybe is it. Uh, Barrick Gold. Oh, this is ABX, Barrick Gold. Is trading up nicely, up 56 cents. Let me look, let me look at my favorite ASA, which is the uh, South African Gold and Precious Metals. Um, I think it's a fund. Went to A, B, C, D, and it just spiked up to an E. Now that's a very good action uh, on the daily. But the weekly chart is still needs a lot of work technically, and the monthly chart is the same thing. So keep in mind, I wouldn't be surprised if gold is in play. Ah, let me go to Mike in Almond Beach. Mike, how are you? That's what you're talking about, what I just called in about, uh, the GDX. Good. Um, so, my question what, what is, are you uh, doing? yeah, I had, I, I had an order in. Uh, I wanted to try to get into it yesterday, but my, my buy limit order was a little too low at the time, and I, and I, I never got in. Do you think it's too late to get in now, and uh, or would you wait for some kind of a – uh, short pullback, and where do you think, um, even on an intraday, like a 15-minute basis, where do you think a good entry point would be for the GDX? 
Okay, so I'm going to do this, and it's very interesting. That's a really, for, for me, that's a really interesting call, and I'll tell you why. Because yesterday you had specifics that you have wanted to get in at a specific point, and you um, were waiting for that. So that means that you had some very tight parameters. Now, all of a sudden, those tight parameters from yesterday, you're kind of saying, well, now it's done what I wanted. Not only has it done what I wanted, it's like a rocket ship to the upside. Hey, is this the move that I was expecting, but it just wasn't happening because it kept on attempting to rally and failing, but now it's just broken out? So that's the question that is both in the den, I'm getting an email, and I've got your call. So now this is what I'm going to say. Because of this tumultuous moment, because even though the 5% so-called tariffs haven't gone into effect, I think it's mid-June that it does, and even if this is a, uh, a technique of Trump's, which we know he does, you know, Trump always wants to win by 51%. He wants that 1% to be able to say, I won. It doesn't matter why, how, where, or whatever. That's been his modus operandi. So if this is a trading technique, on the other hand, it does this MCA, uh, the, whole, the whole deal that was made between Mexico, Canada, and the United States, it puts that into a different sphere because it says, wait a minute, I thought we spent a year trying to get a, a, some kind of ruling. I thought everything was part. I think everything was going well, but now you've changed the, the rules. Well, you know, the rules keep changing all the time. In fact, Mexico is busy changing the rules all the time. Nobody here talks about it, but they do. So if it's a technique, I want to see how the market is going to hold it. Why did I go on this little uh, spiel right now? Because that applies to gold at this particular moment. Because as I was saying, money comes out of equities and goes into bonds for safety. So geopolitical risk, because for all of a sudden now, gold is waking up as a geopolitical risk. So now I can answer the question differently to what I would have done yesterday. You know that yesterday I probably would have said to you, I don't see anything yet. It could happen, and it always happens with gold very quickly. But I probably would have said to you, and the dollar's still holding well. Uh, if you want to tiptoe in, that's fine. That's what I would have, I'm almost sure that's what I would have said. But if silver right now, you see, silver can't get out of its own way. It hasn't broken this major downtrend. So I'm looking at the gold thing as a, it's like an insurance policy as if it was the VIX index. That's why I'm looking at gold. So I'm going to say to you, we're about to go to a break. Can you hold through the break? Uh, it's not bad, I'll just hang up and listen to, say, to the recording because okay, I'm on my start, break at work. Start so a small position. But, Mike, but I Mike, do have the start, same suspicion as you that it could be a currency of fear, you know, a big bounce. Okay, okay, I'll be talking about it. I'm going to say start a small position here, at least to get something there. I'll be right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So just quickly, the uh, e mini is now down minus 31 at 27.59. This is an area right in the 25th, 2758s. It's just got to try to hold there. Uh, it's going to be important. I think we did see that uh, midday high. Um, we'll see. All right. So now let's get back to our nitty gritties here. So I'm going to say to, to Mike, the G uh, GDX, which is the gold miners ETF, trading up 93 cents. I'm going to say, even though it's a point away from, well, it's over a point away from where you would want it to get in. The fact is that it has changed directions. The MACD now is very strong. Stochastic is improving at 45%. I'm a little worried. I don't like vertical spikes in any of the uh, in the stochastic in any time frame because they tend to uh, fade quite quickly unless there's comparable price movement. Here yeah, there is. We're at the high of the day. So, Mike, I'm going to say to you, yes, start a position. You can't have the same amount as you had earlier on or you would have done yesterday, but start a position. And you're going to have to give this one really give it 21 69 cents a three percent risk on a smaller position here's why it seems to me that uh, based on the geopolitical aspect that this is not going to be resolved in, in, in over the weekend and even if the market thinks oh, you know what we can live with this sort of thing we lived with it uh, with the tariffs the market kept going high with the china tariffs maybe it'll resolve the geopolitical aspect is the part that I think the gold is looking at right now. And gold is not silver. Gold is exactly what I think, exactly what I'm looking at, is the geopolitical aspect. Silver is not. Silver gets dragged up. So we're talking about be very specific. Be, the, be along the GDX. Um, I'm looking at gold itself. Let me go to the GC contract. You see, if you could, if you could do gold... Via the, let me see, the GLD, A, B, C. I think the GLD, if you can go to the AIU, IAU, sorry, the IAU, it's the same price at, at 12.48. That's playing gold much more directly. And that weekly chart holding the 200 period moving average is a much better vehicle for my eye, at least the way I'm looking at it. So if it's a choice, GDX right now, Trading up, that's 1.22, and the GDX is up 4.38. Um, the GDX is the gold stocks. So you've got to make a decision here. You've got a much better percentage gain on the GDX than you do on the IAU. And I'm not sure quite why that is. It's up 15 cents. Oh, because of the way the price point. So my eye says that's a, the vehicle that I would use is probably the AIU. You asked me about the GDX, and I'm going to say start a position. Let's look at it again. Maybe Monday or Tuesday, obviously, I will be looking at it during my show. 
But I'm thinking that the 120 minute chart has got some gaps at the 20, yep, 20, 98 is the 200 period moving average. You've got a lot of support. And I think it's active right now. Yes to GDX, start the position. Not a full position because we don't know yet, don't know what's going to happen over the weekend. But then you could add to it on pullbacks if we get, um, if it sustains this move. If it doesn't go underneath the gap low today of 2119, by Wednesday of next week, gold is going to be on fire and the dollar should be pulling back much sharper right now. It's down, DXY is down. Oh, it's only 27 pips at 97.88. They're actually a little separate because the dollar to me represents the U.S. economy, which so far seems to be okay. I think we could be going to recession if CTIS, which is a syntax. No, it's holding down to dollar seventy-five, holding very well. So yeah, I'm looking at this as a geopolitical event, and that's why the dollar is something a little bit separate. You can't. There's no, the relationship here has been kind of separated for a while. I've been talking about the dollar as the icon of American economy. I'm talking about now the GDX and gold being the geopolitical nervous barometer. Well, I, I hope that's uh, that, that's what I'm looking at. So now the question is. Oh, man. Oh, Boeing. Yeah, let's just do those again. Boeing is down six at 243. Yeah, you know, Boeing is out of my realm right now. There's a, there's a lot going on with Boeing. I think they're in real trouble. They're going to have big spikes to the upside, but I also think probably lower highs and lower lows for a little while, and then they'll be back, but it's going to take quite a bit to get them back. Uh, next question I had is, oh, SMHs. You know, I'm kind of impressed. They're down 35 cents. They haven't taken out the low of three days ago of 98.46. They're trading at 99.28. Oh, well, when I, well, let me make it clear. I'm only impressed that they aren't down three points. That's all. I'm not impressed at the chart formation. I think the SMHs have been telling us for a while. I've been talking about this. The billing and the price were just this, uh, the greatest dichotomy I've seen in years of any instruments. The difference between the price skyrocketing from 80 up 50 percent to 50 percent to 120.71 uh, just on the 24th of April, now down at the 99 level. I think that's telling us that billing is going to still be slow for a while. That probably towards the end of the year it'll start coming on strong again. That's the way I'm looking at it. But right now there's still a disparity, and that disparity has to be resolved. Could be balances to 101 to 103. That's what I've been talking about. So far, nothing much. But yeah, you could see that. But I think there's going to be a lot of testing. But I still think the 97 to 95 area, that should be really good support. So we, we, it's time, I think, now more than price. Next question I had was, uh, oh, I, where was this? Let me just run this, scroll this back a bit. Um, oh. The question about high-grade copper was yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't answer it. Uh, where did I? I typed it again into the, the den. <laughs> HG, HG. high-grade copper at 2.64. Makes a peak D in the Chapman wave up there at that high back on the week of the 19th of April. Goes to $3.0015. Now it's trading at 2.643. Look at this. We, we were talking channels before. Remember I showed you the silver channel? Look at this. Look at this trend line. Look at this chapter. We've inside track buy, a buy zone. It's under the buy zone, copper. This is not good. If I put it together, remember, I always like to do this just to give you the big broad aspect. Look at wood, W-O-D. Wood is the iShares Timber and Forestry ETF. Gone to a lower low in the monthly chart. Gone to a lower low, obviously, in the weekly chart. Huge arch formation, dreaded H pattern. Look at this, failure pattern. Yep, it's a little green candle, even though it's down four cents today. But this is not a good sign for the world economies, as as I look at it. Uh, yeah, isolated strength, different places. But this is important to look at. Let's look at caterpillar. After all, if the grains are starting to move, caterpillar at 120.0, down a dollar seventy-five, right on the 200-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart, monthly chart. Ooh, another dreaded H pattern. Um, and dear. Oh, dear. Uh, dear has gone from 170 down to the low the other day, about 131 or 32. Trading right now to 139. So if wheat and the grains are starting to move, let's keep our eye on this sector, because this sector could be hurt by other things. 
But if the farmers are going to be wanting to build, uh, to, to buy tractors and equipment, these are the guys that should benefit. So I don't see anything just yet, but it's on my radar to say, don't dismiss them. They've been hammered, part of the China deal. But maybe the wheat and the United States economy, see, if we start building the United States economy um, and our own infrastructure, this is this could be a good thing. All right, I'll be back. Dow's down 300, 261. Buzzer Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Stay tuned for the great programming coming up. And uh, look at this. This is the TNX, the 10-year Treasury bond yield. See where we are, 2163, 2.163. We've been here before. Remember, I drew this line in uh, a while back to say, hey, wherever we are, we've been here before. Unless it starts to break about 4.20, which should be really, the TLT will really take tank if that happens. But we've been here. So the rates right now, that's not the issue. The issue is why are they, why uh, is money flowing into the TLT? My explanation is because money's coming out of bonds into the security of uh, the so-called safety of, of bonds. So out of stocks into bonds. Why is the uh, why the, the gold spiked like it did? It spiked because there's a geopolitical fear right now. That's my interpretation. Therefore, holding this at least right now, I think is okay. Uh, it, it spiked more than one would want. If you yesterday were trying to get in today, you're going to get in a point high on the GDX. But hey, 
that's just the way it is. At least it's showing you the direction. Now he's probably up for a little while. So let's see how that goes. And crude oil coming down is a big deal. So check out my opening calls, my daily newsletter. I start sending out, it's a daily newsletter. I send charts out almost every day. And uh, we are still in some long positions. Uh, the, the, the best long that we've got now that is a pure long in terms of uh, the trend might have changed, and that's in the agricultural area. So we're in the DBA, which has done extremely well. So at 16.83, just today alone, it's up 0.48%. That's wheat, corn, and, and, and uh, soybean. But who knows? By next week, we could say, okay, the farmers will have to wait. There's no money now to help them out. I don't know, but it's the it's the the the, the weather, the the waterlogged uh, pastures. I mean, this is a serious stuff that's going on. So that's the stance that we have. Still looking at the short side, but if you look at the uh, right now, if I can go to the Dow, yep, the Dow. You see the Dow right now is holding this trend line, but it's just gone a little lower. It's down 286. This is not good news because if this if the Dow closes really negatively. Then over the weekend, you've got the uh, foreign markets opening down. So the futures on, on Sunday night, it could be really bad. So just be careful. Put in your stops. Have some cash. That's what we've been talking about for a while. Just raise some cash. Have patience. We'll get there. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you on Monday. Stay tuned for, for Steve. Uh, I think Dave is still away. And then you've got Tom O'Brien. Have a wonderful weekend. See you Monday.